What is going on fellow web developers? My name is Tyler Potts and in today's tutorial I'm going to teach you a really quick trick to be able to show and hide um, a password inside of uh, just CSS with the mix of CSS HTML and a bit of JavaScript. So as you can see here, we have this little login form. You can put in your username, uh, you can put in a really secure password, and you can actually show the password by clicking on this little icon. The icon will change. Um, I got download these icons from Google Fonts. You can go to fonts.google.com forward slash icons, um, and here you'll be able to search, let's say, I, I, uh, and there you go, you can see I've got visibility and visibility off those two. They're the ones I've downloaded, so if you want to use those, you can come get them. They'll also be in the repository, along with the boilerplate code for this tutorial. So there you go. So this is what we're going to be building today. Something super simple, but it's on a lot of websites, so you can imagine how useful this is. That'll do. So here you go. We've got basically some boilerplate code here. Now, I will. this is basically just this form. Let me show you what this actually is. So if we uh, start a development server, I'm going to use mpx live surfer dot and that's going to run the firmware surfer now if you don't have node installed at npm or you don't even know what this is you don't have to use this all you have to do is open your index.html file um, in your uh, explorer or in your finder and then just double click in and open up in your default browser let's hit this and this is going to open up this is going to basically refresh this page and give us the version without the icon uh, so here we go. There you go. So you can see we have the same thing. This is all this code is. It's dead simple. There's a repository link below if you want this boilerplate code. Um, and all we're going to do is add the icon that allows you to reveal the password with the functionality. So let's get started. So you can see here we have this blank sort of thing. The first thing we're going to need to do is add in our icons. I've just showed you where to get those. Um, so if you want to go get those icons, you can. Or just download the repository and get them from there. Um, so we've got these icons. So what we want to do is add that in here. So let's just put in here some cool passwords. You won't know what this password is until we add the functionality in. Um, cool. So what do we want to do? We want to basically wrap this input in another element because we want the icon to appear in here. Um, so to do it, let's just delete that, create a diff, repaste that back in, and let's just call this with a class of, um, what's a good class? Just password wrap P. ASSWD wrap. There we go, the password wrap. We then want to add in the icon or the image next to our input here. And I'm just going to give this the source of I open, and it's just going to say show password like that. Uh, and there you go, we've got this, this icon, it's appearing. It doesn't, you know, it's not looking great. We also want to put this image in a button, because um, obviously we're going to want the button to um, do something. So let's just give this a type of button because if we don't give this a type button, it may submit the form and then obviously we'll have some issues. Um, but there you go. So we've got a type of button. We want to give this the ID. Uh, we're going to just say show password. We could say toggle password because that's essentially what it's going to do. It's going to, this button's going to be multi-purpose and it's going to open and close the password thing. And there you go. So that's what we've got here. We've got an input with the type of password, um, a name, an ID, and a placeholder. We don't actually need the name for this. We don't even need the username bit for a name. There we go. Let me just make it a bit cleaner. Uh, and there you go. So we've got this. And this doesn't, you know, it doesn't look great. You can kind of click it. There you go. Uh, it doesn't do anything. So let's style this up. So let's go to our main.css and go right down to the bottom. So at the bottom, we're going to, first, we're going to get the password wrap. So obviously what we want to do is we want this to be next to it. So all we're going to do is say position relative. That's all we want with the password wrap. We then want to get the hashtag show password. Uh, so we actually want to get the button here. Um, so we want this, which we've got here. And then all we want to do is say, oh, that's not how you do position. Position absolute. We then want to give it a top of 50%, uh, a right of one rem, because we want it to be in. We don't want to be touching the edge. Uh, we then want to transform translate y at minus 50%. That will center it because we're doing 50%. That's going to push it down from the top. If we minus 50%, that's going to minus 50% of the height, which will pull it dead center. We then want to give it the cursor of pointer because we want it to have the actual pointer effect. Uh, we give it a width of, say, 1.5 rem, a display of flex, and we'll just set the, we'll align the item center because that will bring that to the middle. And there you go. That's looking all right. However, it's a bit big, and there's a reason for that. Let's just go to, let's create another show password, but this time let's target the image inside that. We just want to set the width to 100%. 
and the height to auto. And there you go, we've got a little icon there, looks pretty cool. If we go to the HTML, we can actually change this to the closed icon as well. And there you go, you can see both the icons look good there. And there you go, so that is all the styling we actually need for this. As you can see, that's how it works. Um, now we need to do some of the functionality, and the functionality is dead simple. All we want to do is get reference to three things. So first thing we want to get reference to is our show password button. So let's just use, we could either use... There's a lot of things we can use, but we're just going to use a query selector. Um, probably better to use a get by ID, but this I like using query selectors. They're easier to read. Uh, and then we're just going to go show password like that. We're then going to get the show password icon because we want to get the image. So what we're going to do is we're going to say show uh, password button, and then we're going to say query selector image because we want to get the image inside of this button. Um, now, finally, we want to get the password input. So we want to get this actual password input here. Um, what we're going to do is set this to document.querySelector, and then we're going to use password. Now, we want to get the button. So we're going to say show password button, and we're going to add an event listener of click. So what this is going to do is means anytime you click this, we're going to run a function, and we've got to pass a second parameter, which is going to be our function. We're going to use an arrow function for this. Um, so we can go here. And then inside of this function, we're going to use something called a, uh, I was going to call it a ternary operator, which I think is the right term. So we're going to use ternary operators here. So I'm going to say password input dot type. And then we're going to say if the password input type is equal to password, then all we want to do is swatch, <laughs> swatch it, swap it to be a text. If it's not a password, then we're just going to swap it back to be a password. So what we're saying here is we want to change the type. We're going to check the current type. And if it's equal to password, then we're going to change its text. And that way we'll be able to see what it is. So let's just try this. Let's save. Let's just type a password in. And now let's just click this button. And there you go. You can see it says Michael Password. If we click it again, you can see it gets it disappears and reappears. However, the icon isn't changing. And that's where this um, show PW icon comes in. Let's just copy that and underneath this we just want to say the source is equal to and now we want to do something else we want to say show underscore password dot icon dot source dot include so we're going to check if it has the word open in it so if the source has the word open we then want to say we're going to show the i underscore closed dot svg Otherwise, we'll just show the open one again. And there you go. Let's break these down so we can make these look a bit easier because you can break these down. It won't affect the actual code. Um, and there you go. So you can see this is, our, this is our if statement, essentially. This is what happens if and this is else. And that's the same here as well. So there you go. Let's come back in here. Now, let's just do something. Uh, let's say my call password again. And there you go. You can see the icon has changed and you can transform it. And that is all you need to create a password open and close. Let's open this up fully. Zoom in. Um, and here you go. So you can see we can put a cool password in. Demon, Demon King Potsy. There we go. And uh, our password will be, let's just say something along the lines of a super secure password. Um, and there you go. You can see you can reveal it and open it as simple as that. Also... Everyone uses 123, come on. If you don't use 123, why are you playing that? Uh, there you go, a super secure password, 123. And you can actually just open and close that like this. Okay guys, so that is it for this video. I hope you have learned something new, a cool new trick to use on your websites with your logins or anything else where you use an asterisk or a password form. You can now have the a nice bit of UI UX user experience here to allow them to see their password as well. So if you have, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button if you're new around here. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. Also, if you get stuck and you need some help, feel free to jump in our Discord server. The link is down below. You'll be able to ask for help in our help channels and someone should be able to help you. If I'm around, I will try and help you myself. But for now, guys, thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.